Lumos. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Chuck Guys Radio. I'm your host, Ezra, a.k.a. Bill, also known as The Flash, Sir Ezra, <laughs> the watchful history of magic professor, the planet wizard, obviously, yours truly, me. Please welcome your lovely design, which the fascination of this year, Triwizard Champion herself, and my wonderful co-host and yours, Lottie, a.k.a. Fleur. Hello, and einen wunderschönen guten Tag. It's so good to have you back in our beautiful little cottage on the outskirts of Tinworth. Kommt rein und macht's euch gemütlich. Welcome to episode 82, in which we discuss Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This week we'll talk about chapter 3, The Invitation. We'll give you a quick life update with our homemade cottage ketchup, feed our brains with important trivia knowledge, and then dive head on into our chapter summary audio experience. And I want to start you off with another question for cottage ketchup. How does it feel to be on spring break, Mr. Kirk? It feels great <laughs> it feels great although i had to make a flash reference to start this episode because i needed some energy okay <laughs> i think i could sleep all mm. spring break long i know because i think i'm sleep deprived yeah you know i think i've been a little just going at it too hard i don't know i'm all over the place i'm stressed blah blah Different things, and then you come into a break, and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I could just go into a hibernation and be good. I know, right? <laughs> For a whole week, just sleep. That'd yeah. be great. I did hear once that we often, when we feel like after work, we don't have enough time to really you know, do our hobbies and, and do things that make us happy. We sometimes try to get that time back by staying up later. Because mm -hmm. you feel like it's a good exchange for getting right. some stuff done that I really want to get done or that I really want to do for my enjoyment. Yeah. And yeah. Um, sometimes we do that. Not very often. We're actually getting better at getting our sleep in. But we calculate if we want eight hours of sleep, we have to be in bed by like 830 latest. So we're asleep by nine o'clock because mm -hmm. we get up right before five. Yeah. So... I mean, I know, I know. There's some people who are on shift work and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Like, that was wild. You know, I used to work night shift. I used to work 7 o'clock at night until 7 in the morning at the factory. 12 hours? 12 hours, all night long, yeah. Wow. It was crazy. I would go in and the sun was up and I would come back out and the sun was, you know, up. Is that when you got your, when you developed your coffee habit? <laughs> yeah, actually, I mean, at that time I had an even worse habit, which was like a cracked up in a Mountain Dew. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That got me <laughs> through like a bunch of caffeine just yeah. sipping on the machine. It was uh, it was wild. It was a wild time. So yeah, I mean, again, we are grateful. That's we're thankful. Work. Thankful yeah. that we're able to you know uh, be on the schedule that we're on because yeah, yeah it, it was rough. My dad did that for years. Yeah, and uh, he'll tell you like when he could get on day shift, mm -hmm. it was just night and day different. So so also yeah, very thankful to everyone who who does that right once. I mean yeah. Your sister used to work night shifts too, right? Yeah, 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 as a nurse, yeah. which is also crazy. I mean, you need people to do those things, right? right. We need uh, police officers and you know, right. just yeah, medics my, and stuff. My cousins, they yeah. both work in that system, so it's just hard because your your circadian rhythm is telling you like we should be asleep, right? <laughs> but but yeah. you're also like ah, I gotta be also be on guard and like do my job, so yeah, kind of crazy. But anyway, uh, yeah, so far spring break has been good. Um, gotten a few good. things done, and uh, then we're about to do some spring cleaning later today. Uh -huh. I'm really looking forward to that. I honestly <laughs> cannot wait. I, it's just my gosh. Uh, you know what though? In, in all seriousness, when things are cleaned, my mind is like, "Wow, this is so nice." I know, right? It's so nice. It's and already like, so nice. Yep. Th yeah, already that whole wall over there mm -hmm. looks great. I know, I know, I know. You have something you want to mention about that wall, so <laughs> we'll go ahead and throw it to you. How is your spring break going? <laughs> great, because our Christmas tree is down. Thank. I finally. I mean, guys, I don't want to. Again, I don't want to... Don't want to brag or anything, but uh, ours <laughs> our, is still up. Okay. Our Christmas Eve is still up because we just didn't have the time and energy. Just, you know, when things on your to-do list just keep... You just keep adding things on there. You try to give them priorities, things that need to get done that are important. 
and just putting down the Christmas tree. Yeah. Putting away the Christmas tree was like. <laughs> so, I love. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. What? Uh, you said putting down. I know. And I, love it. I was and like, I, what is the phrase I, again? I, Lottie's been done such a great job of like she has to, you know, she's finding through those phrases, but they're cute and I want to point them <laughs> out because. Put it down. Because most of the people in this country would not. Did she just say put that tree down? <laughs> As in like put it down on its back, like, psh, like, you know, <laughs> psh, down. Down yes. tree. Yes, put it away. Put it away. Okay. Put it away. So, sorry. 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 Go ahead. Put it back in its box for next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was just, it just was at the very bottom of the priority list. And we mm-hmm. never got to that bottom part of the priority list. So no. I was like, let's do that when we are on break for a whole week. And I do have some time to do that. I also combed through all of our mail. Wow. And that's um, fitting for this episode. That oh. you caught that you oh, went through all the mail and the <laughs> invitations to pay this bill. Uh, yeah. Sure, right. Well, at least people know how how many stamps to put on the envelope. But yeah, if we ever get a letter that has like a bunch of stamps on it, I'm gonna be very happy because that might be. <gasps> I just thought of something. That'd be such a funny thing to do. Mm-hmm. Send a letter to someone with like all covered in stamps, covered in stamps. and then like, addressed by yeah. Molly Weasley. It's the most expensive letter ever sent. Probably. Crazy. Yeah, if you want to spend a bunch of <sighs> bunch of stamps. Uh otherwise, yeah, it's been it's been really good. Like you said, sleeping in has been wonderful. And waking up when you can already see light outside, even if it's like seven o'clock, is so nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Yeah. Um and I'm enjoying my coffee, my weekly coffee. Can I, I have a sip of that? Because absolutely, you know, just one more. I just want a little. Just a oh, you don't want to start yours yet? I like I like the bitter brew here for just a second. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's mm. the cold brew with actual caffeine in it. So um, try to stay away most of the time from from caffeine nowadays. But you know, on Saturday mornings, it's not even Saturday morning. But it's Monday morning. <laughs> it's for Monday us. morning, and we're recording. I just like to have my cold brew now. Yeah. Yeah. During recordings, you said, yeah, you're going to try have a little bit more caffeine, yeah. a little more pep, so you guys are going to get um, kind of a juiced up uh, flur yeah. from here on out. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Hold on to your pants. We also got, this morning we went and got a trivia deck for the next, I mean, this book and probably all the books to come because it has 600 questions in there. Right. 600 different questions. Right. And I actually, when I ordered it, I don't know if you go to the YouTube version, you can see it now. It's a small little box. When I ordered it, I didn't read the whole thing. I just looked at the cards and thought, okay, the questions are also kind of hard. So they're not all easy questions. Uh, Sounds good. Let's order it. And I thought it was the whole Trivial Pursuit game, you know, the Mm -hmm. board game version of it. Yeah. Which I thought would be fun if we ever have, you know, people over, we could play that. It is the smaller version, the compact edition, actually, it says it on here, with just the questions, and you got a little dice die. Yeah. Uh huh. Die. One die. die. I, two oh, dice. Oh, don't put me on the spot. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> in here, and um, which gives you the color, and we're going to try that because we each have now, in our trivia competition, we each now have one question we bring for each other, which mm-hmm, could be a mm-hmm. book question. Yep. And then we will pull from this deck, which is all about the movie questions, I think. Which is fine. Yeah. Which There's is plenty of questions. So We're a reread podcast that's going to go over the movies, just so you guys know. <laughs> okay? We're, that's what we're going to do. We're still going to learn a bunch of stuff. So. No, it's cool. The movies are great. And I'm down to, I'm down to get after the trivia, honestly. Let's go. I did bring a good question today, um, and okay. I know that you brought one as well. So when, when you're ready, we'll, we'll dive into it. So Somehow we, we have to keep track of the points, though. How do we do that? Um, um, should I just put them in the How about today we dock? just, yeah, we'll just put them in the dock and then okay. we'll kind of, it'll evolve. It's magic. Well, I have my phone here. I can have a phone. Yeah, you could. And have another notes thing open. But how can we trust Trivia points. that you're not altering the points? <laughs> there is a, there is <laughs> an audio <laughs> record. <laughs> I could go back and I could uh, validate, you know, where we're at. So when we give updates, you guys can also um, keep score and help help me keep track because, uh, you know. I need I to know. insert later in editing. I need to insert the evil Palpatine laugh. Uh, in this, uh, uh, yeah. This point got, oh, this by the way, yeah, we are going to. Um, <laughs> I just looked up a lot. It doesn't know it. I'm, all, I'm over here uh, looking up different audio equipment that I can use to bring on some better, cool sound effects for the podcast. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. 
That was so, really cool. We'll talk about it later. Uh, okay, are we ready? Yes, we are. All right, let's dive into the trivia training. training. Now, do I roll a die or what do I do? No, so I think we should start with the question that we brought for each other. So you start with the question for me and then I'll ask you my question and then you start with a trivial trivial pursuit question. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question first. Ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you know this character. He is from the Fantastic Beast series. His name is Newt Scamander. Absolutely. What is his formal first name? Oh, I know that one. It's Newton. Oh. What is his second no. name? Theodore Theseus is his brother. Uh huh. Uh huh. Newton. He has two middle names. Two? I want the first. Isaac. If you know the third, that's cool. Isaac. <laughs> Do you know any of his middle names? Give me a first letter. I love that you got Newton right, though, right? Like out the. I had backup contingency questions. You see what I did there? Oh. If you wouldn't have got the Newton it's right. It's so funny, though. I'd have been like, you know what? All right. You know what? My question is actually also about a name. Really? Yeah. Okay, good. Funny. I'm pull up a list of Harry Potter character names. No, don't. Um, don't you so dare. The first. <laughs> the first letter for his second middle name is A. Look, she's going to go back into her mind palace and try to like think back through every... Thank goodness we didn't have to go to like... I mean, the... Never mind. All Albert. Right. Nope. Newton. Newton. Arminius. Close. Oh, my gosh. Close. Newton. Artemis. Artemis. Oh, my goodness. That, that was is really actually close. <laughs> I know. I was like, I and mean, then what's the next letter for his second middle name? F. F. And it's not Frank. As much as I want to talk about Frank Bryce, we got to move on. Okay. Newton. Newton Artemis. Yeah. Scamander. Foul. Fee. 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 Very good. Fa. Newton Artemis Fido. Fido. What? <laughs> no. Fido. <laughs> Fido. Yeah. Wait, isn't that a dog's name? Yeah. Fido. That's cute. That's cute, right? That's so, really cool. Yeah. Newton, Do you think Newton Artemis. is a... Newton. <laughs> Do you think Newt is a dog or a cat person? Uh, I feel like he's a dog person since his middle life, you know, Fido's in there. I just don't know. I feel like he's an animal person. I, like I think so, too. He, he likes both, but I I don't know. I think he's a cat person. I think Tina would be a cat person. Yeah, for sure. He would sure. be a dog person. Yeah. So. And they do have measles, I think. So. Okay. I think he needs a dog, too. Yeah. Like a dog-like creature. For sure. right. A crup. A crup. All, All right. right. So here's my question for you. I'm ready. So did you Are get you that really? one? Did you get that one right or wrong? No, uh, I, I totally didn't get it right. Okay. <laughs> so um. Zero. So far, well, so it's gonna be zero zero, zero let's, people. Okay. Let's see what you have to say about my question. Okay. Let's go. What is Fleur Delacour slash Weasley's middle name? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fleur. I knew it when I looked it up. Fleur I actually knew it. Margareta. <laughs> Margarita. <laughs> um, Fleur Delacour. Fleur. Um, what's to start with? I. Oh, Fleur Irene Delacour. No. What? What's the French word for no? We and. <laughs> What's the French word? For sorry, no? sorry, sorry. They leave that up to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we go. Because Germans Is all the time are we like. And nine. No. Nine. No. Nine. No. Nay. Nay. <laughs> Nay. Nada. Nope. No. It's very I, French. I don't know. I'm not going to look it up. Go, what's the name? Fleur Isabel. 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 I knew that. I knew that. I like I that. that. Yeah. Isabel. Fleur Isabel Delacour. Okay, so we're or zero, reason. zero. Zero, 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 zero so far. It's so an now, exciting soccer match we got going on here. Yes. So now it's going to get more exciting. These cards each have six categories. Okay. Uh, they're color coded. And we have the categories of the dark arts, Hogwarts, magical spells and potions, magical objects, magical people, and animals and magical creatures. Okay. Okay. And I, do you want me to shuffle them? Yeah, you can shuffle them if you want to, for sure. Um, so what we see. do is we this pull is... a card, and then one of us will roll the dice, and it'll, there's options on there, and we'll have to read based upon the, the answers. whatever the dice questions. tells us to read. I guess. Yes. Okay. So here's the dice with the colors. Gotcha. And you I have shall to roll it. start. Here we shuffle. go. 
blue, blue. which is Hogwarts. All right. So pull me I'm a card. Pull a card. Any card you want. I'm watching you. Okay. I have to see if I have the Are we right. doing two of these? Are we doing one each or what are we doing? One each. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. It's actually from this book or this movie. Okay. How long do the champions have to complete half to complete? Oh, that's an easy one. Okay. Sure. What? How long do the champions have to complete the second task of the Triwizard Tournament? How much time? How much How time? How long do they have? Uh, um, one hour? Yes. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> Ding, 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 yeah. ding, Whoa. ding. Woo! Uh, yours truly over oh. here making it happen. Okay, one point mm. for uh, Mr. Quidditch Captain. Let's go. Okay. It's now, one nil. Uh, let's see. This you is the roll the dice. I didn't I, see any of the questions. I'm shuffling them anyways. Them. I, don't, yep. I don't, I don't, I ain't playing. Okay, I'm, I I'm rolling the dice. Go the ahead. Die. Tell me, tell me what you got. I've got purple. Purple, okay. Well, purple. Wow, talk about a terrible shuffle there. Give me the purple <laughs> question. Okay, are you ready for the fifth one? Yeah. This is the dark arts. Ooh. Who is Narcissa Malfoy's sibling? <laughs> well, we have two, actually. Oh, okay. We have Bell Bellatrix and... and Wait, no. Yeah, the, yeah Nymphadora. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, the um, Andromeda. Andromeda. Sorry, Andromeda. Nymphadora is her mm -hmm. daughter, Tonks, right. obviously, and Andromeda. So it's Bellatrix, well, Narcissa, and Andromeda. Yeah. The black sisters, right? Aren't yep, the black, black sisters. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, okay. Yay, well one done. One, so one, one. Far. Can we do one more each? But that doesn't count. No, 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 no. We just do one. Yeah, it counts. It counts? Yeah, one more. Just Why? You can't you can't handle that we're no, equally I can't. good. I just want to try it one more. But please. next time we'll do one we each. Okay. okay. Come on, please. Okay. Here, where's it? Where did I put the dice? Here. You okay, ready? Yeah. Oh, uh, I can't see it. Purple. Dark Purple, arts, dark again. arts. <laughs> my speciality. <laughs> okay. Okay. So far, these have been easy. What does Draco Malfoy use to get the Death Eaters into Hogwarts? Uh, it's the vanishing cabinet. You got it. Let's go. I would say, I know there's many questions on here, but I would say for now, we put, we have a pile of like cards we used. And then once sure. we are through the pile, sure. because then it's been a while since we've seen that card. Sure. We'll start over with the cards. Okay, now it's your turn. Sounds great. Roll one that more. die one more. Let's so go. It's Let's two go. Two one so far. Dun da da dun. Oh, I can't see it either. Green. Green. So this is the category of animals and <gasps> magical uh -oh. c -c -c creatures. Okay, what petrified animal do Harry, Ron, and Hermione find hanging by her <laughs> tail in a corridor? <laughs> You better get it right. It was the Mrs. The Norris. The Mrs. Norris. The cat. The Mrs. Norris. Well, so far, not Good too job. bad. Okay. Well, we might have got a pretty easy deck, you guys. It's okay. We might have to. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do a little googling and see if we can't find. Well, if sometimes anybody has so a easy super questions. hard one, please send us a link. Oh okay. yeah, please don't send it to Ed. Send it to me. <laughs> okay. Oh, you mean like a whole deck? That's yeah, hard. like a whole yeah. deck. Citizen. Well, we see, we'll see if the questions get harder. Good start, though. 2-2 two, two so far. 2-2. Two, two, here we go. Some people are like, boring. Boring. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm kind of like, the questions are no. a little boring. We'll, we'll get some questions that are get, And sometimes the easy questions, you forget. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes you forget. All right. Trivia over. Okay. Are we ready for the invitation? Ready. Chapter 3. The Invitation. Harry comes downstairs to join breakfast with the Dursleys, just to find the family in a sour mood. Dudley's school uniform no longer fits him due to his weight, and the school nurse has prescribed a diet for him. So to make her son feel better, Aunt Petunia had insisted that the entire family needs to take part in the same restrictive diet. Therefore, their breakfast consists of nothing but an unsweetened piece of grapefruit. Harry, fearing he would starve on such a diet, had shared his predicament with his friends weeks ago, who then rallied to send him a variety of food items. Hermione's parents sent sugar-free snacks, Hagrid contributed rock cakes, and Mrs. Weasley went all out and sent homemade fruit cake and meat pies. For Harry's birthday, they each surprised him with full birthday cakes, all delivered by Hedwig and Errol. On that particular morning, the atmosphere at the Dursley household is tense and grumpy until a letter arrives that escalates the situation. 
Uncle Vernon, visibly angry, summons Harry to the living room. He wants to discuss a letter from Mrs. Weasley, which was sent through the Muggle Mail, asking for permission to take Harry to the Quidditch World Cup final. Uncle Vernon is furious. The envelope is excessively covered in stamps and has drawn unwanted attention from the mailman. Harry has to stifle his laughter at the sight of the envelope, and when he asks if he's actually allowed to go, Vernon hesitates. The man is torn between his desire to make Harry's life miserable and the appealing prospect of an earlier than expected break from Harry's presence at his house this summer. To buy himself some time to think, Vernon asks a few questions about the Weasleys and what their normal way of sending letters would be. This isn't improving the situation at all because each question forces Harry to talk about more details from the Wizarding World. And there's nothing Uncle Vernon hates more than this unnatural, quirky, and abnormal way of living. Pushed to his limits, Harry threatens to inform his godfather, Sirius Black, who is still falsely believed to be a mass murderer, about the situation. This seems to do the trick. Uncle Vernon gets noticeably nervous and comes to the conclusion that it would be best for him and his family if Harry is allowed to go with the Weasleys to see the Quidditch World Cup. Dudley is shocked and confused at the sight of Harry leaving the living room with a joyful spring in his step. Harry is so happy that he could almost fly up the stairs, taking three steps at a time. Back in his bedroom, he finds Hedwig has returned with a visitor. Ron's tiny owl, Pig Widgeon, has come to deliver a letter from Ron. In the letter, Ron informs Harry that they're coming to pick him up tomorrow, whether the Dursleys like it or not. Harry quickly scribbles a response that he has permission from the Dursleys and can't wait to see him. Once the overexcited Pig Widgeon has left, Harry also finishes up his letter to Sirius, letting him know he'll be at the Weasleys for the rest of the summer. Entrusting the letter to Hedwig, who seems proud to outperform Ron's hyperactive owl, Harry sends her off. With both owls on their way, Harry happily pulls out some of the birthday cake reserves he's hidden under the floorboards to enjoy a proper breakfast by the window. He's filled with gratitude for his friend's support and excited about the adventures that lie ahead, marking a moment of happiness and anticipation amidst the usual challenges of life with the Dursleys. <sighs> so let's start this chapter discussion mm -hmm. with caloric restriction versus <laughs> fasting Ooh. which is better for you i cannot believe what how many grapefruits does he get in a day he only got i a don't quarter. know it One sounds like quarter? a tiny piece for breakfast not even a full grapefruit yeah like not even i mean that is actually ridiculous a grapefruit is probably a really good breakfast and there it says on their on dudley's dudley's diet the page that he has on the fridge from his school nurse there's lots of fruits and vegetables on it, which Vernon calls it rabbit food, right? Right, right. <laughs> and again, when it comes to food and diet, there is so many opinions out there. There's so many philosophies out there. What should we eat? How? When should we eat? How should we eat it? Uh, should we eat at all? <laughs> right, right. Um, but I mean, it has been proven, though, that calorie restriction, like severe calorie restriction, and mind you, Dudley probably went from I don't know, a diet of 4,000 calories to a diet of 500 calories or something. We don't if see the rest that. of the day, but it seems like something of the sort. And I think yeah, that's, I mean, you can tell the mood in the D Dudley, in the Dudley house, in, in the, the Dursley house. In the old Dudley Dursley house. <laughs> is uh, grumpy and oh, everyone's sure. hangry. Yeah. And Harry's the only one. I love when Harry later, you know, happily walks out the living room and grins at Dudley and it's like, that breakfast was so filling, wasn't it? And what a great <laughs> And he just breakfast. knows upstairs is his birthday cake and his meat pies from Mrs. Weasley. Gosh. You can't just help but be happy for Harry in that moment. Can, can I admit but, something on this yeah. podcast? We used to get Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of them. Not going to lie. You yeah. buy them. Those little Girl Scouts are there. And you feel there. good about it, right? They're like, please buy our cookies. It <laughs> yeah. helps us. Absolutely. They yeah. are delicious. Yeah. So the Thin Mints clearly are like the best. Everyone loves Thin Mints. They're amazing. Uh, I don't remember the rest. Uh, there's there's the peanut butter ones. There's the ones you put in the freezer. I don't know. They're all good. Yeah. And I remember a time, oh boy, my sister had given some money to like my dad, I think. 
She always had more money because she literally, you know her. She's nickel, yes. she'll nickel and dime she everybody. Saves her She's money. unbelievable. That's what my brother was. Right. I mean, <laughs> she'll play my video games that I bought with my money and like not buy any and be like, yeah. eh, it's too much. Like, why don't you, can we buy this game for us though? It's like, no. Um, but I would be, so she had a stack of these Thin Mints. Yeah. And even, I did it once when we were younger, but I remember when we even got a little bit older. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, I took a sleeve of those. And I hid them up in my room. And I remember just going up there and just munching down on those bad boys. Yep. In private, a way, big old glass of milk. And it feels so good. I had the PlayStation turned on, ready to go. It was just a blast. So I kind of get what Harry's feeling there, which is like, now, I wasn't being starved. I mean, I, right. I did not need the Thin yeah. Mints upstairs <laughs> afterwards. But uh, I remember, especially when they were gone, and I really had to make sure that, that I was careful about, uh, you know, who knew I had these Thin Mints. And my sister was like, so funny. do you know where, like, she was, she searched my room because she knew I was, Yeah, man, they were that good. They were that oh, good. I if bet anybody liked them, I don't know, like, hit me up. I mean, they, <laughs> I think that's a common thing around I need to try the them one day. I, I mean, we, I think we all had some sort of food items back in the day that we could just, I mean, once we start, we would finish the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I definitely did. Mm. Ooh, it was bad. Uh, have you ever? Probably not. I don't think they sell them around here. You know Haribo, ha- Haribo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. The like their gummy bears and other things. They're not exactly gummy bears. I don't even know how to describe them. They're called fruit gummies, but they taste different than gummy bears. They're called pico bala. They look like little soccer balls. I don't. They're supposed to at least. Oh my goodness! And they're tiny. And if I mean that's yeah, a, I by see. the way. By the way, that's how I learned how to do the whole trick with throw something in the air and catch it with your mouth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would finish the whole thing, the whole package by throwing them up in the air, catching them with my mouth. And like, this was so fun. Yeah. But before I even realized that the whole bag was empty, (laughs) it was bad. So I usually then tried to stay away from them because I knew this, this is something I would finish this is a real talent by the way i remember when lottie and i first started talking she was like we're going you know (laughs) you're getting to know each other and talking about talents and skills and she's like well actually um uh, i can do this and it's really cool like like i can catch anything i switched to grapes yeah so i don't do it with the gummy bears anymore yeah because you were like grapes because you you were all about like i remember you were in your position Mm -hmm. like you're in your volleyball stance you're like watch this doesn't matter where it was at i even threw you a low one one time you're like yeah got it hi got it you know i was like dang what in the if you go to our TikTok, which is now called the Extended Edition, right? The TikTok, oh, yeah. Yeah, and you yeah. scroll all the way back, you might be able to find a video of that. Some? I think the video is still up on TikTok. <laughs> wow. Or yeah. somewhere. I don't know. I feel like we posted it somewhere. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of a pastime here in the uh, Kirk household. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, talking about a diet, though. Um, yes. That's definitely not how how we would do a diet. But again. No uh to each their own also what's what's kind of shocking and this is not what the school nurse said but it's just petunia who was like okay we all have to make duddy feel better so let's all follow the diet and it's crazy how i mean all of them have to follow a diet of someone who has to lose a lot of weight Mm -hmm. um and especially harry who gets uh, you know who's kind of underfed anyway yeah yeah and i feel like petunia is also very she's thin thin yeah and the thing is i feel like she definitely would follow the diet with dudley to make him feel better but i wanted to ask you the question do you think vernon had a secret you know yeah, I was s- place the same question a food somewhere just like harry where he would yeah. go when no one sees him and, and just eats his whatever snacks yeah totally <laughs> to survive agree. this diet I think when he goes to work, he's got his oh, yeah, he's sure. got his, his drawer and he's got like yes. all the snacks and stuff. I mean, remember I most of us, I think, have that. Yeah. So true. So, But remember the first chapter of the entire book series yeah. when Vernon goes to work and gets what does he get? Oh, uh, that's a good trivia question. He has it's his lunch break and he goes to the bakery and gets some sort of really. Yeah. Baked good. Surprised you remember that. Oh yeah. I will say, just yeah. while we're on the topic of of uh, you know food and diet and whatnot, um, d- 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 do what you think is best. I people. think so too. Do, yeah. Whatever do, makes you feel good, right? Whatever makes you feel good, because I love my sister. Just uh, she. I always talk about the 
the way you either um i don't know it's, it's a lot of times the feeling or the energy i think that you put into what you're eating or what you're doing and if you feel good a lot of times it, it may not affect you the same way as it affects other, other people and if you love it and you're like who cares yeah i mean my gosh like it was just the, this chem, this is just the chapter that we have and i mean i am just kind of feel for dudley a little bit like i don't know i'd rather him have Two to three full, awesome, great meals packed in a, you know, four hour eating window or six hour eating window or whatever. Yeah. Who knows? Just yeah. small changes. You I often have, say like, you know, just something that you feel mm-hmm. like. I have learned that from you, actually. Uh, in the morning, I, you know, I used to be told as a kid, you always have to eat breakfast before you leave the house. And I feel like we've talked about this on the po- podcast before, but um this was something I grew up with and it becomes a habit and I don't question it. So I just eat breakfast. And then later, I I mean, I met you and I've, that's what I've done all my life. And then I, you're talking about fasting and the benefits of fasting. I was like, Oh, that's cool. But I don't think I could ever do that in the morning. But then I questioned like, am I really hungry when I wake up in the morning? And actually I was not. So I, I waited a little bit longer until I got Mm -hmm. hungry and it felt so much better. The food tasted better. Um, I don't know, my digestion felt better and I thought it was great. And, um, I, yeah, you just feel like you give your body time, you know, to digest all the foods from yesterday and get ready for the next bunch of food. So we live in the world of, you know, thankfully abundance of food Yeah. to the point where we have to restrict ourselves a little bit to not eat food all the time because that's what our wild, I don't know, ancestors might've, who knows, might've done. Right. Right. Cause yeah. yeah. I would just say that people, you know, do what you think is best and what you think is it, yeah. like, like feels good because I have colleagues who are you kidding me? If you said not to not eat breakfast and they're mm-hmm. fit and what yes. that is their thing, man, right. do not take that. No way. Yeah. So uh, I, I think of my colleague, Lauren, who's a guidance counselor, and she's just like mm-hmm. phew, all, all about it. She's very much against like yeah. fasting for women and stuff, you know, so. And there's there's could, all sorts of stuff know. out there. Yeah. We in but our it's... in our tiny little shell cottage uh, do not give you guys any advice uh, on that kind no, of stuff. No, yeah, we're we... no nutritionists whatsoever. Go see a doctor. I mean, like I like that food. Stuff, right? <laughs> so like I can tell you some yummy <laughs> foods to go eat. Yeah, uh, and some cookies to sneak in. But no, I mean, I just think uh, you know, I just feel bad for Dudley. I'm like, man, dude, like, yeah. I don't know, that's a grapefruit and you know vernon yeah he's he's sneaking something in at work or whatever which is good good yeah. for him he's he's still allowed whatever by the way there is even a wiki entry about the bakery in surrey mm. it's where mr dursley went on a perfectly normal owl free morning he yelled at five different people he made several important telephone calls and shouted a bit more he was in a very good mood until lunchtime when he thought He'd stretch his legs and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the bakery. A bun. And I think, not sure. It's like uh, a sweet bun. His bakery to purchase a large donut after forgetting about the u- unusual event. So I think he says he wants to get a bun and then gets a donut or something. Well, I don't know if it's the same thing in British English, but let us know. So what is a bun in the UK? In Southern England, a bun is a hand-sized sweet cake. Oh, there you go. Cool. So while in Northern England, it is a small round of ordinary bread. That's a big difference. It is, yeah. Because I would think a bun is like something like a Brötchen, right? That you know from yeah. Germany. Remember the Brötchen? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So in Ireland, a bun refers to a sweet cake roughly, mm-hmm. okay, roughly the same as a cupcake. Ooh. Wow, okay. Buns are usually made from dough, flour, milk, yeast, small amounts yeah. of sugar or butter. Cool. So maybe, you know, sometimes if that's the case, you think about something you want to get and then you get there and you see something and you're like, uh, actually I want a donut. <laughs> Do you know that yesterday I almost got us a donut? You know, I even asked if they had like <laughs> yeah. my favorite donut and it's out. And I was like, what a, that's sign. a sign. What a sign. I did not need that donut. Yeah. I didn't want it anyways. And I came back here and then we had an awesome breakfast. Yeah. So Yes, we did. Well, boy, oh boy, do I like eating something sweet once and in a while. Know, Man. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> sorry. I have to turn off my phone. Um, somebody liked a reel of that we posted years ago. Not years ago, but a long time ago about Cornelius Fudge at the trial about to uh, declare Harry guilty. And then Dumbledore walks in. Oh, cool. Uh, it's just great. Okay. So diet. Uh, Vernon has his own probably, you know, to survive on this diet. He's also a big man. Uh, he probably has his own food source somewhere. I think we can agree on that. 
But I also wanted to ask you, can you imagine Harry writing to his friends, which I think is awesome that he did that. But can you imagine Mrs. Weasley, Ron coming downstairs, telling her that one of her basically adopted children is starving at the Dursley house. I think she right away dropped everything to oh, cook him up yeah. some meat pies and fruit cake, and like she probably wanted to send more, but Errol couldn't take it. I bet she did, and I guarantee everything I hear about her cooking, it just sounds amazing. Yeah. Yummy. Awesome. So, yeah. There's even, it's so ridiculous that this is in the story, but there's even the moment where Vernon later asks about um, the Weasleys and t- to tell him more about Mrs. Weasley, and he calls her Dumpy. Oh, I have and it I was in my like, notes. What? It's outrageous. <laughs> so, so ridiculous. That and he calls her Dumpy. He would probably love her cooking. I mean, yes. like, absolutely be like, this is amazing. And I just think it's kind of, yeah. Oh, by the way, I think Petunia can cook good too. Probably. Probably. We I never mean. really hear so much about her cooking, but I think we, so. We know that Harry doesn't, that we know that Harry knows not to burn the bacon. True. From from the first movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try not to burn it this time. Yeah. <laughs> what does she say? Something like that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Enough about I food. mean, he has to work hard at that household. But hey, let's be grateful that they put clothes on him, right? Don't well, they be describe, ungrateful. They, 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 they describe the sweatshirt that he's wearing. <laughs> and it's like this. He, he has to roll the sleeves up five, five times. times. And then it was hanging below his knees. Yeah. So when I think, yeah, I'm like, wow. Way okay, oversized. That's a little dramatic. Yeah. Um, I don't think of him like that. Could you imagine if they would have done that in the film? It just doesn't work, <laughs> right? You're like, that's so stupid. Yeah. Uh, it would just look so weird. Yeah. So glad. Good. I mean, it's you can be more, I think, uh, extreme or exaggerated in mm-hmm. writing. And in, yeah, in for the books, sure. Right. With your imagination. Yeah. But when it comes to putting this on film to make it more relatable and stuff, it just, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't always. Yeah. Breakfast at the Dursley is not going well. Uh, Dudley's trying. He's eyeing the other grapefruit pieces. So at least he seems to somewhat enjoy eating the grapefruit, which is good. Yeah. And then the breakfast session gets interrupted by the mailman because the mailman decided to actually ring the doorbell and give the letter by hand to Mr. Dursley. Oi. Because. What what in the world (laughs) is this? eh? What is this? Yeah. Because there was a strange letter amongst the other letters or mail. And I think it's hilarious if you're the mailman. Yeah. I would I would ring the doorbell too. <laughs> really? If you see a whole letter. It's like none of your in. business. That's true though. It's none of your business. I think it's funny. Would you answer the door if somebody rang the doorbell here and said, hey, I want to ask you about this. This is from Actually, Germany. Actually, yeah, it is kind of strange. This is from Germany. This package is from Germany. What is it doing here, huh? Well, that's different though. Who are you? Somebody covered it in all. <laughs> Everything is covered in stamps. But it would look different. In yeah. the mail, they sure. would be like, "Wow, it's got something special. What's going on here?" So yeah, I think people are nosy, and I think people need to That's... stick their noses somewhere else. I mean, it's it's a it's okay. a British suburb. I'm sure people are. And Petunia's nosy. <laughs> She's always peeking over the hedges to see what's going on, and they oh, know. Yeah. So they know that since they peek over the hedges, people are peeking over their hedges yes. to see what's going on. In oh, their I know. house. Trying to figure out what's wrong. There's with this an house. owl, multiple owls flying in and out. And tropical birds. Tro- yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Imagine that. If you're just all, if I you're mean, across the street and you look over and you're like, there's literally an owl flying in and out of that kid's window. <laughs> yes. Again, we're not defending the Dursley's actions whatsoever, but just imagine their deepest desire is just to be normal. Uh huh. And every summer, all this strangeness weirdness magic stuff enters their house and they don't want it and it's like it's awful again they're awful yeah yeah but also everything this summer goes against their wishes how do you think the grangers deal with all that the owls coming and going and stuff i mean do people like talk and gossip about their daughter i mean it's so interesting that the dursies are so worried that somebody would find out but actually, the ministry does everything so muggles don't find out about the wizarding world. Right, yeah. Right. There's actually nothing that they should fear because if a muggle ever gets close to finding out what Harry is, the ministry would probably come Just and modify obliviate them. them. Yeah. So. Gosh, should have told Uncle Vernon that. He'd been like, well, okay. Guess, yeah. We, yeah, guess we can talk openly about this weird <laughs> stuff. Let's go ahead. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But yeah, I don't know how they do that. Um, I don't know. Oh, we do see the Granger house just to get a glimpse of it when in the movie, at least. Yeah. Um, in the seventh book. 
Right. In the, in the movie, in the seventh book, Lottie. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think the, um, the seventh movie. It's too bad. I mean, like, like imagine if uh, if Hermione were more that friend Harry was going to go stay with or do stuff with, yeah. and he communicated more with her and her family. I think it'd be less weird. Uh, For you know? sure, yeah. They would be more I, open about it. And I think. Probably. They'd still be like, what is he. So you have a weird child too? Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <It's cool. laughs> I mean, I remember when um, Lily, Petunia's sister, Lily, Harry's mom, when their parents found out she was a witch, they were all proud of her. And I yeah. think, well, you wonder if if Hogwarts, if the letter said something about don't tell other family members. Because when they go to family gatherings, what do they tell them? Where's their daughter? Where's Lily? Petunia comes with them because Petunia is around. She goes to school, to a local school. And then Lily's not there. So what do they tell others? Do they openly yeah. say, this is what's going on? But then the word would kind of spread if you go to distant family members. Or do you have to come up with a different version of it? That's the thing. Because we, through the Dursley size, it's always they want to cover it up. So they tell everyone about a different school that harry goes to yeah um but how do you yeah how do you do it as a normal air quote normal muggle parent right don't know interesting i'm sure they maybe, do have some backstory or they yeah i do feel, i feel like that the hogwarts staff maybe even mcgonagall comes up with something they could tell other people around them do they have a guy who's sitting there at hogwarts who's just writing backstories for kids <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, he's, that'd be so cool i would want to do that i would do i'd be like down that'd um, be so fun you need to come up with an excuse for where why this kid's coming to a magical school right gotcha. yeah or i mean or they come up with a school that could be that is somewhere registered as a muggle school that all the kids go to mm-hmm, you know that mm-hmm. that they could tell them a certain school yeah is. maybe they've got like a right outside down the road from hogwarts yeah they've got a modern school right okay and it's very it's modern just a mock, mock yeah up. it's just there and yeah. it's just made by magic but you, muggles can come in and it looks like it's it's there's some goings and comings or whatever yeah um and as if you were inquisitive and you wanted to follow up on hermione and check and see where she was <laughs> your uh and her aunt or uncle you swing by and you knock like yeah she's in class blah blah but you know she's busy right now we can let her know that she came by and <laughs> <laughs> all as well right maybe they go that far that's maybe hilarious. they go that far maybe we would I, w- I would love to be the attendance person at right. that school saying like what's up like you're all these yeah. muggles coming <laughs> to check out that wizard school that i know about i mean uh the matrix yeah okay so uncle vernon he uh receives the letter he's not happy no about the attention the unwanted attention that his household gets from the mailman and he calls harry over to the living room to have a conversation and um he reads he reads molly's letter out loud which i think is kind of cool he doesn't hand him a letter and and lets him read it but he reads it out loud and can you read the letter to us like you are uncle vernon reading it to harry yeah here we go dear mr and mrs dursley We have never been introduced, but I am sure you have heard a great deal from Harry about my son, Ron. As Harry might have told you, the final of the Quidditch (laughs) what World Cup (laughs) takes place this Monday night, and my husband, Arthur, has just made arrangements to get prime tickets through his contacts at the Department of Magical Games and Sports. Rubbish. Ah. I do hope you will allow us to take Harry... To the match, as this is really a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, sure, right. Britain hasn't hosted the Cup for 30 years, and tickets are extremely hard to come by. We would, of course, be glad to have Harry stay for the remainder of the holiday. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And to see him safely on the train back at school. It would be best for Harry to send us an answer as quickly as possible. In the days, in 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 the what? In the normal way, because the muggle postman has never delivered, yeah, obviously, to our house. Okay. <laughs> and I am not <laughs> sure he even knows where, sure, where it's at. Right. Okay. Hoping to see you to blah, blah, blah. Molly, we have, yeah, okay. Who is this person? Put enough stamps on that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Great yeah. Job. Just not. Uh, That's okay. I think, though, is, yeah, when he reads that little bit about. Um, that he could stay here the rest of the summer. Whoa, okay. okay. Now uh, we're now we're talking. Now you're cooking. Yep. So yeah. I love how it's described. Harry can basically see his inner conflict taking place behind his mustache. Yeah. Mustache. Yeah, he can see he can see the <laughs> he can see the wheels turning. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Um, so either he makes Harry happy, but he would also make himself happy by making Harry happy. Yeah. So what's the better option? Right. Vernon, come on. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, this is like, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I okay. It's, it's strange. Yeah. It's co- whatever. But it's the threat that really could. I think he would have done it anyway. Yeah. But Harry goes ahead just to make sure. And he was like, remember that godfather I told you mm-hmm. about who was like awesome. mass murderer? Like, he probably want me to go to this. He probably. So, and I haven't written to him in a while, so he probably thinks uh, he wants yeah. to check on me if, if I'm not writing to him. Right. So. And he's like, all right, all right, fine, you can go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's so cute, though, how uh, Mrs. Weasley writes that letter. And later we learn that Ron says, well, we, we yeah, would come anyway to, to get nice. you, but uh, we're just trying to pretend to ask for permission, right? So they I mean, don't want Vernon's permission, but they try to be nice. They try to be. And I'm sure, you know what? Yes, probably Mrs. Weasley said, let's ask him. But also, I feel like Arthur does. He's trying to be nice to the muggles and give him some, Oh, my gosh. You know, Wait, is this the chapter? Is this the book where yes, they drop the next stuff? chapter? No way. Arthur and the, the twins. Because I was sitting here thinking, like, how do they not remember them? But I'm like, oh, that's in this book. I got you. Because it's a pretty yeah. memorable uh Yes, encounter. Moment. My gosh. Yeah. I mean, they did break your son, or well, your adopted son, whatever, uh, Harry, out of your nephew, yeah. out of his room in book two. Right. So there's that. He didn't tell them, though, that the Weasleys and Ron, that that was them. Right. Well, did I he? guess Harry doesn't mention Ron's name very often. They never really even know. He just goes off and does his no, thing. No, I think. He doesn't really talk I to him. I think Vernon doesn't know that those boys were the same that got Harry out. Right, right. So thankfully, he doesn't. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, yeah, he'd be, he'd be wanting to have some words. You know, I think what's interesting, though, is that it's Uncle Vernon who does this whole, who has this whole conversation with Harry. And Petunia is not involved in this conversation at all, even though she's their blood related aunt. Mm -hmm. And she would have known what Quidditch is Mm -hmm. and what the normal way of sending letters is. For sure. Yeah. I, I wonder if she read the letter later. Right. Probably. Probably did. And probably was like, hmm, interesting. And yeah. So crazy, crazy to see, like, if you picture her in your mind, Mm. smuggling that letter, maybe into her front pocket or something, and then going out to do some yard work and then being, you know, kind of in the flower bed or something and pulling it out and reading it just to kind of think about it. Maybe have a moment where it's like, wow, okay, I got to step away from my, my husband and my son, uh, and think about this magical time with my sister. She doesn't like to do it. It's probably sorrowful, probably Mm -hmm. hurts. She's bitter, a lot of issues there, but she probably does. Yeah, I feel like I feel like she has some secret moments where she does think about Harry going off to Hogwarts and how, you know, even when he is there doing the school year, I wonder if she sometimes thinks about him. Man, I just get chills when I think about Petunia's and Harry's connection and how it could have been. And yeah. yeah. It's too bad. <sighs> but anyway, Harry gets his wish. And I again love how sassy he is when he sees Dudley. Dudley's just trying to, you know, get some some endorphins what's the name like some some why, good f- why, why what, what's the why what's the chemicals that you get when you get a happy feeling uh, dopamine <laughs> dopamine why are you dopamine. asking me these these technical endorphins, questions on right? the podcast? so he's trying to get some dopamine from something other than food yeah and what's the next best thing watching harry get told off and get yelled at mm-hmm. but uh, surprise harry doesn't and he just happily skipping up the stairs and dudley's confused yeah about that you know if you watch the series uh from the start to finish Mm -hmm. uh dudley is treated like super well everything's awesome going well for him and he's a little bit put out when harry gets to go to magic school but Mm -hmm. as the as the books go by it starts to really flip and and shift right and Mm -hmm. he starts to be like not happy by the end he's sort of realizing that like (laughs) like understanding what's important in life and and, and all those things i know it's it's sort of the deleted scene they didn't put in the movie the product of his environment who he's yeah. around all the different you know influences his mom and dad and so as he grows up he really starts to kind of shift his mindset and, and look at mm-hmm. his uh, cousin a little bit differently yeah i mean crazy. he's like his brother right they grew up that way straight up they, they grew did. up like brothers yeah for like yeah the first 10 years of his life i mean that's yeah, yeah crazy so i mean i don't know like like it in this book you start to see okay yeah it's gonna things are going bad for dudley and they're going really well for harry and then that just kind of 
continues. Well, I mean, except for there's a, you know, the darkest wizard of all time trying to kill him, but otherwise <laughs> that's going well for him. Well, Harry. I mean, just in the front chapter, just <laughs> in the first chapter, Privet Drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we see them together at Privet Drive. Yeah. Um, because even in the next one, it's like, okay, they will kind of um, bond over, well, sort of, we don't really know. Dudley's just sick from the Dementor attack and stuff, and then we'll uh, get into the right. next book and stuff. But things oh, yeah, just, they, they, they tend to be, you know. That's the thing, though. Every time Dudley is exposed to some sort of magic, it hurts him. It He gets hurt yeah. through it right. by Hagrid, next chapter by the Weasley twins, mm -hmm. and then next book by the Dementors. Dementors, yeah. So no wonder, you know, like it's mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. that almost like a self-fulfilling I mean, prophecy. He saw his aunt get blown up in book that three. That too. You know what yep. I mean? Like he's literally actually seen it. Uh, and in a lot of different ways be yeah. not cool. So, yeah. yeah, strange. So it kind of fulfills the prophecy that his parents make about magic. So it's interesting evil. that he, uh, even though he has all the evidence in front of him, he still at the end shakes Harry's hand and kind of, you know, um, sees that Wishes he, him well. yeah, sees somehow. that he protected yeah. him versus yeah. the mentors and stuff. So, gay, gay, uh, gay, gay. Back to Harry and his happiness upstairs. He's going upstairs, finding his owls back and... I think this is just hilarious. Uh, Pigwidgeon is there too. I don't know where he got him from, but Sirius' gift to Ron because Ron lost his pet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was actually a man. <laughs> yeah, which was a dark uh, wizard. Yeah. Yep. I think Ron always wanted an owl, and this is kind of like a cute, minute owl who's just super overexcited. Oh, so proud of himself. And that he, yeah, that he delivered the letter from Ron. And Hedwig is just so annoyed by that little squeaky owl. And I love how it's described that she she just ruffles her feathers and just gives that little bird an annoyed mm -hmm. look. And then later on, she shows Harry how a good post owl should behave. Pigwidgeon already left with the answer for Ron. Pigwidgeon is not there. It's more like to show Harry, I know what's up. This is how you behave. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny. And I wanted you to uh, do me a favor and sort Hedwig and Pigwidgeon into houses. Oh, okay. Um, easy. easy. I think Pig is a Hufflepuff owl. Okay. Straight up. Yeah. Probably. Sorry. Just happy <laughs> I mean, to be here. <laughs> just happy to be here. Uh, bouncing around. Lots of energy. Happy. Do you think he eats well? Is a pig. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And let's see. Hedwig, I feel like she is definitely... I don't know. Could be Slytherin. Ooh. Uh, she's kind of sassy, but she's brave. I mean, obviously she's brave, but I mean, she's sassy. Okay. Right? She and is. I feel like she maybe has a little bit of a... Attitude? Attitude. Yeah, sometimes. for sure. So, yeah. So you would... Give me a house. Where would you sort her into? Slytherin. Okay. She's a Slytherin owl. I, I would have sorted her into Ravenclaw. I knew you would. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be different, so... Oh, yeah, she's very smart. What do you? Yeah, let, let us know, guys. What do you think? What's uh? She's ambitious. She house? she was like when Hagrid was you know picking her out. She was like the chosen one, me. True. Right here, pick me. She's also very loyal, though. She is. She's great. So it's difficult, but hat, I think hat she stall. Be close. She's a hat stall <laughs> between all four houses. <laughs> yeah. So oh, I love Hedwig so much. Have you ever seen the picture of of Ron with um, Pigwidgeon? Uh, Wait, like an a, actual picture? Yeah, an movie? actual movie. Yeah. No. In, in the movie. It's a the owl is a what do they call it? A oh yeah, scop, remember? Scops. Yeah. Scops. A scops, a miniature scops owl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there's actually I mean they have they brought one in on set and there is cool. Like that owl is there. And I think it's even chilling in the background a couple of times. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. But okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um before we get to the last lines um, of the chapter, which were super awesome, I want to read Ron's letter real quick that he sent to Harry because I think it's really cool that mm -hmm. um, the D the Weezes actually did not care. They didn't care. They didn't care what the Ver Vernons. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Yeah, th they didn't care what, what the, the people's <laughs> at the Privets drivings were saying. They didn't. It didn't matter to it's them. It's the Dursleys. It's not the Dudleys. It's they not the Vernons. <laughs> They're the Dursleys. They're better, they're just, um, you know, you guys know what we're saying, right? I mean. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, Ron says, Harry, Dad got the tickets. Ireland versus Bulgaria, Monday night. 
Mom's writing to the muggles to ask you to stay. They might already have the letter. I don't know how fast Muggle Post is. Thought I'd send this with Pig anyway. Pretty fast, I guess. Really fast. Because, I mean, I guess he... I don't know how long Pig Widgeon took to get to deliver this letter. Because it talks about they're going to pick him up. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we're coming for you whether the muggles like it or not. You can't miss the World Cup. Only mom and dad reckon it's better if we pretend to ask for their permission first. If they say yes, send Pig back with your answer pronto and we'll come and get you at 5 o'clock on Sunday. So he doesn't say tomorrow. Mm -hmm. He -hmm. says on Sunday, which makes me almost think like he sent it yesterday. Like, Mm -hmm. let's say it's Saturday right now um, Mm -hmm. because I know that... Could have been midweek somewhere. You know, I don't know. Doesn't say. I mean, Post is, I guess, running on Saturday too, so... Why did it... Something in here made me think, though, that... Oh, yeah, here. Here, Harry's answer is wrong. It's all okay. The muggles say I can come see you 5 o'clock tomorrow. This Ah. is the answer that Harry writes right now in this chapter. So it's Saturday. Ron says, come to see you on Sun. We we come pick you up on Sunday. So which makes me think he probably wrote it on Friday. Maybe sent it Saturday morning. Who knows? And then Harry answers, okay, tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. And what's crazy is you feel like Harry's going to go to the Weasleys and then spend a bunch of time there because that's what the movies seem like. But it's actually he gets there on Sunday mm-hmm. and directly on Monday they go to the Quidditch World Cup, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, Hermione's on her way too. Um, I think True. the other thing too is like, you know, Pig might have just taken longer. Maybe that's why he's so proud yeah. that he actually finally made it. What if he got like chased by some other owls or birds and Dang. he barely survived to deliver this letter he's brave. we don't know it's tough <laughs> i like pig i like pig too pig yeah so all good harry has permission and so it's not as awkward when the weasleys come and get him the next day or is it <laughs> um i think arthur is very excited for the next day. Yeah, for I all that he is. can't wait to go to a muggle house. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I want to read to you the last couple of lines of this chapter because they're so nice. Okay. Uh, so Harry sees Hedwig off because he also sent the letter to Sirius, just letting him know that he will be at the Weasleys and the World Cup for the rest of the summer. And so he, he watches her out of sight and then crawled under his bed wrenched up the loose floorboard and pulled out a large chunk of birthday cake. He sat there on the floor eating it, savoring the happiness that was flooding through him. He had cake and Dudley had nothing but grapefruit. It was a bright summer's day. He would be leaving Privet Drive tomorrow. His scar felt perfectly normal again and he was going to watch the Quidditch World Cup. It was hard just now to feel worried about anything, even Lord Voldemort. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's let's <sighs> soak up these words and this feeling of happiness that Harry's feeling right now mm-hmm. for the rest of the book because oh, it's coming. Yeah, for Harry, it's coming for him. Yeah, it's, it gets crazy. This book gets a little wild, and mm-hmm. he has some a lots like hey, everything with him and Ron is great right now, right? right? And then it's about to hit a, a good sour, a good grapefruit patch mm-hmm. here soon. It's gonna be very sour. But I love I love these lines, lines like that just cherish that moment of happiness right we know yeah. life is full of ups and downs and harry's might be very extreme ups and downs but in general that's how it is and that's why we have to just soak up that happy feeling i cannot wait to hit this outro and get some food <laughs> ourselves <laughs> to have our breakfast i'm mm-hmm. probably going to grab a date or two yes and pop those in before the yes. eggs start cooking let's do it because that is i'm hungry Okay. And I am not hungry for grapefruit. Although an apple looks pretty good. We got some of those oh, over can, the fridge. Uh, I mean, we have plenty of apples. I can I cut one up. Pretty solid, so. so are you telling me you're ready to finish this chapter? <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Um, so yeah, you guys thoughts. will get this uh, episode coming out here in a couple of days. And I think if you'll check the social media, we are going to pick the winners in our next episode Ooh, yes. for the spring break Uh-oh. giveaway. Last chance for you if you hear this. Last chance for you to right. enter by what day? Friday? Uh, Friday. Okay, yeah, let's we'll say. Because we're going to record on Saturday. Um, So let me just, it doesn't really, if it's in the future, it doesn't matter to people. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, if you are following along with the podcast, 
So then f- today is the 25th. You'll hear this episode probably on the 27th if you're listening live. Right. Uh, the day or the day it's released. And then we will pick on the Friday 29th, the 29th. Which is Good Friday. Yeah, Good Friday. There yeah. we go. And so then we'll announce those winners on social media. We'll also announce the next day on the podcast to try to yes. get you guys some of the... Th- we can get them out of here. Yes. If you want to enter, cleaning. if you hear this Wednesday and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't entered yet. You can enter by simply leaving us a review on Apple Podcast. Don't worry if you don't have an Apple phone, an iPhone, <laughs> an Apple phone. <laughs> then uh, ask one of your friends if you could go leave a review real quick for us. And that would be, I mean, huge for the podcast. Yeah. You did that. And that way you enter our giveaway. So make sure you leave a review, like a written review, uh, not just a you know, star review. Because we don't, we can't see who True. leaves us just yeah. stars. So I'm sorry to everyone who's done that. But it has to be a written review with a name on it if that makes sense yeah and we have a tom riddle funko pop the illustrated version of the order and the phoenix the order and the phoenix <laughs> i literally wrote the order and the phoenix okay that's awesome the illustrated version of the order of the phoenix here uh the hufflepuff edition of sorcerer's stone signed by a true badger over here and a harry potter cookbook and a shell cottage shirt ready to be sent out so don't hesitate grab your phone or your friend's phone and write a few words on how you like the podcast so far yeah let's do it let's and then we can get on to more i think there's actually there's better ways there's more fun more fun funner funner way fun and more (laughs) fun uh, ways to do giveaways, and we would love yeah. to do more of those on the podcast, and uh, not through the review system, but literally, like, I mean, I don't know, things that we do either either on social media, um, like a post where you can just go quickly mm-hmm. like and do a comment or something like that. So yeah, that'd be easier for you to enter. Yeah, and I've yeah. seen I've seen a lot of other people do it that way, and I think mm-hmm. that would be a cool way to do it going forward. So yes. we want to get this one done and out of the way, and then move on to something more. Uh, yes. More, I, I, all I can say is more fun. All right. Um, this was fun, though. And thank you to everyone who did leave a review already. Yeah, Thanks yeah, yeah. so much because that helps a lot. Just a cool thing to do. So that's it. It is time for me to go get some dates. It's time for some walnuts. I'm going to have some eggs. I'm going to have some feta cheese. Yes. Uh, Whatever else. Avocado, maybe. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So that's what we're going to be Plenty eating here. Plenty of food. After we read about Dudley's diet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get hungry. Be, man, I'm, I'm starving. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right, friends. Hey, thank you guys for for joining us this week, um, for tuning in to Shell Cottage Radio, 94.7 COZY. We hope you're going to join us in the future. We thoroughly enjoy meeting new positive Potter people that don't behave like babbling, bumbling bands of baboons. baboons. Uh, if you don't want to miss out on the next episode, then be sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review and follow over on social media at Fleur and Bill. If you truly enjoy our content, consider supporting our growing wizarding family on Patreon or Apple Premium. You will find all the links down below. Thank you so much to all our current patrons. We appreciate you to Luna and back. On our next reread episode, we will discuss Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Chapter 4, Back to the Burrow. This podcast almost was called Back to the Burrow, by the way. So make sure to tune back in next time. And until then, have a great rest of your week. Thanks for joining us in our shell cottage today. We know it's not much, but it's home. Harry comes downstairs to join breakfast with the bur- with the Bursleys. <laughs> with the old Bursleys. <laughs> Burn and Bursley. Knox. Knox. Knocks them out.